From bell jingles to Kris Kringle, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is um, actually. Ho, 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 ho. Today, a special Christmas-themed holiday episode of Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Emma Fife. Hello, I feel very prepared for this episode, assuming that most of them are about Victorian English Christmas traditions. Uh, yeah, well, because um, hmm. I read a lot of Victorian <laughs> literature. <laughs> I mean, there's probably some Dickens in here somewhere. <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> we also have Amy Vorpal. Hey, I do want to talk about my outfit. I didn't realize that I I match not Christmas, but the lines behind you trap. So that was <laughs> oh, that's purpose. that's great. That's some good coordinating there. <laughs> and we also have Winston A. Marshall. You know what's not very good is those peppermint patty flavored Bud's Light seltzers. Those are disgusting. Unless you put oh, Bailey's in them. Why would you remind us of the, <laughs> of the trash that was the it's holiday, holiday flavored Bud Light seltzers? <laughs> <laughs> At least it wasn't like uh, like an eggnog Bud Light. Like I like uh, eggnog, but like yeah. doing like a dairy and egg beer seems like maybe just sort of like Sounds a bad move disgusting. all around. Like a peppermint seltzer isn't necessarily repulsive in concept, but in execution, <laughs> it was. Um, you've all played before, you know how the game works. If you don't, uh, it's very simple. I have here a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements about the things you know and love. In this case, things vaguely related to the holidays. It's up to these fine folks to correct me when they see what is wrong. Uh, you can correct me at any point. As soon as you notice what's fucked up, buzz in, uh, tell me what's wrong, and your corrections must be preceded with the phrase, um, actually. If you don't, I won't give you the point. Um, that's it. Here is our first statement. In the 1964 movie, Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, Martians Momar and Kimar learn that their children, Bomar and Germar, need more freedom and fun, and decide the best way to provide this is to kidnap Santa Claus. However, the Martians cannot tell the real Santa from the many fake mall Santas and kidnap the wrong one. Uh, Winston has buzzed in. Um, actually, it's, they, they weren't kidnapping, uh, you know, they weren't trying to kidnap Santa. They were trying to kidnap Mrs. Claus because then you had like a hostage situation that Santa would do what you want. <laughs> we have her. Uh, that's not correct, but it's interesting that you mention okay. is because th this movie is actually the first on-screen appearance of Mrs. Claus. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. I think Mrs. Claus is a criminally underexplored character in the Christmas canon. Agreed. Like, it's like, yeah. it's like, you're up there at the North Pole hanging out all year round, like, and like all, every other depiction of her, she's she always have... just like, well, I made cookies. It's like, no, she's got some more interiority than that. <laughs> like, what are Mrs. Oh, Claus's yeah. dreams? What did she expect to be up here in the wilderness with no friends? Like, no, she has to just sit at the North Pole. Cause again, it's like, it's classic abuser behavior. Like, isolating people from their friends, gaslighting them. Like, what is Santa Claus telling her about no. why she can't Mrs. Join? Claus, I'm get out of there. Get out of there, Mrs. Claus. Like, we care wait, about you. Is, I think we just wrote the holiday episode of Law & Order SVU. <laughs> <laughs> Santa's up here running a cult. And Mrs. Claus is like the like she's the mom of the situation, but she's been a part of the she's been brainwashed too, man. We gotta get her out of there, bro. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Amy, Amy. Um, actually, one of those kids, their names doesn't follow the rest of the family syntax, and that's Germar. <laughs> no, no, Germar, Germar is, uh, is in fact there. I believe it's explained at some point that uh, Bomar is boy Martian and Germar is girl Martian. No. <laughs> no, yes, no, yes, it is just that stupid, wow. Emma. Um, actually, yeah. it isn't that like the parents kidnap Santa Claus, the Martian children kidnap Santa Claus because they want to bring Christmas to Mars. That is pretty close. Um, <laughs> in fact, the Martians kidnap uh, two children. Oh. Because they can't figure out who the real Santa is, they figure who better would know what Santa is than children. So they kidnap two children in order to help them abduct the real <laughs> oh. Santa. That point will go to Emma, and we will move on to our next statement here. In Blackadder's Christmas Carol, Ebenezer Blackadder is visited by the spirit of Christmas, who shows him visions of wicked ancestors, as well as a glorious future that awaits Blackadder if he chooses to be good. In this future, his descendant, Admiral Blackadder, is a high-ranking official of the Galactic Empire, who marries Queen Asphyxia the 19th after the death of her triple husbandoid. 
Uh, Emma has buzzed in. Um, actually, what yes. he sees is a future if he is going to be, um, like, if his ancestors are all good, then he, like, sees a future of where he is going to be, like, have a sad future, and he's, like, a slave, basically, and he only sees that he's going to have this good future if he is a wicked person because he's actually, like, the nicest man in England. That's correct. It's an inversion <laughs> of the classic Christmas Carol story. Uh, Wait, the, what? The, yeah. the, glor the glorious future that he sees is actually, that will only come to pass if he starts behaving like an asshole and being shitty yeah. to everyone. And if he actually is good, he'll be a, a meek uh, servant in the future and live yes. a terrible, terrible life. Uh, <laughs> I, I watch Black Adder and... Christmas Carol every Christmas. I do uh, too. What? <laughs> I literally was sitting here like, what nonsense is Emma making up right now? And that was the actual yeah. answer. Like, as far as Christmas specials go, it's up there. Yeah. Because basically, like, it goes back and you see him in, a, like, Elizabethan times, you know, at, like, the Black Adder we know from the series. And, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it's fun. The Queen Victoria and Prince Albert show up to, like, give him a reward for being the nicest man in England, but they're, like, in disguise, so he turns them away because he's made the commitment to be an asshole so that he can not be, like, subservient in the future. It's, it's an excellently constructed piece of television. <laughs> no, I'm in the rotation in between Friday after next and Christmas vacation. <laughs> well, uh, that point will go to Emma as well, and we will move on to our next one, next statement here. The Nutcracker Ballet tells the story of a young girl who receives a nutcracker as a gift on Christmas Eve. At midnight, she witnesses a battle between gingerbread men, tin soldiers, and the Nutcracker on one side, and an army of mice led by the seven-headed Mouse King on the other. The tide is turned when she kills the Mouse King with her shoe. Uh, Emma's buzzed in very unsurely. Yeah. Um, actually, I think they're rats, not mice. There, it, there's versions of both. Um, okay, uh, fair. And this, the, they're sort of used interchangeably, but mice fair. and rats are sort of like, yeah, the fair. Uh, uh, Amy. Um, actually, I just don't remember gingerbread men. Um, there are gingerbread men in at least one version of uh, of, oh, okay. of the story. Uh, yeah, it's it's tricky because like there's there's like the story it's based on, and then the ballet, and you know how yes, how yes. different adaptations and stuff. A lot. But officially, canonically, there's there's gingerbread at least in the original story that that the uh, that the ballet is based on. Uh, Winston. Um, actually, little girl was not cool using a shoe, so she set up a mouse trap. <laughs> And there was this whole cool like sequence in the ballet <laughs> with the mouse, like a giant mouse trap, like coming down, <laughs> killing the king, and all the rest of the rats are like, "Oh Jesus, I'm monarch!" And they run <laughs> off because they're just like, "This is the end of the rat dynasty." Not even like a like a spring trap mouse trap, like a like the no. game mouse trap, just like a, a big marble like <laughs> through through cage <laughs> comes diver like dives in. <laughs> it's the only time the game mouse trap has ever worked. Actually, yeah. is in the Nutcracker ballet. <laughs> <laughs> the ballet just stops and all the dancers just like watch this thing like, oh, wow, pretty cool. What's going to happen? <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and call it here. Winston was maybe the closest in that, like you had the sentence of like, oh, it's wrong in this like shoe area. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't the means that was different. What I was looking for was the fact that she doesn't actually kill the Mouse King. Uh, the oh. Nutcracker kills the Mouse King. Uh, throwing a giant shoe at this mouse didn't do the trick. He just gets momentarily Damn. distracted. And it's the Nutcracker himself who deals the, the 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 killing blow. Wow. Um, I mean, way to take agency away from a female character. Yes, Let's, exactly, I mean, right? Also, like, it's she, a fantasy. Like, like the, a shoe can kill anything in a fantasy. <laughs> the Nutcracker is canceled, everybody. Like, well, no, I don't, no, I don't, no more Nutcracker. I don't remember if at this point she had already been like shrunk down to nutcracker size, but if she hadn't oh. and she threw a shoe, like that should do the trick. I don't care how many was, heads I mean, that rat has. That's a, that's a solid <laughs> point because if you're coming with like a, like a Barbie plastic slipper at him, I don't know how much work that's gonna do versus like a full <laughs> chunkla or something, you know what I mean? Like I definitely think it'll have a different effect. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, no points for that one, but we will move uh, right along to our next one. And this is a fan-submitted question. This comes to us oh. uh, from uh, one okay. of our viewers. Uh, this one is from uh, at Peter Morris. And Peter submitted a couple of very good questions. Uh, I couldn't choose them all, so uh, we're going with this one. This is from Peter Morris. Bayonetta 2 opens with the titular leather-clad heroine and the Undertaker Enzo doing some Christmas shopping when angels attack the city. 
Towards the end of the game, Bayonetta resumes her shopping, this time taking advantage of post-holiday sales with her friend Jean. Uh, okay, Emma, you buzzed in, yes. Okay, um, actually. Yes. They're not technically Christmas shopping per se. Like this is like non-denominational <laughs> holiday shopping. It's not like specifically tied to the birth of Christ. Uh, that's a very good guess. Uh, I should have double checked this. I do think it is it is Christmas shopping, uh, but uh, we can we can double check it. I, I think it is specifically that. Uh, Winston, I'm um, actually since Bayonetta has the ability to uh -huh. rewind time, she actually <laughs> finishes solving the mystery, the murder, the, the the case, whatever she's working on as a as a witch, and then she rewinds time to go right back to when her shopping was happening. So all the holiday specials are still available. Dang. What an excellent fucking guess. It's not right. It's a great, <laughs> great Killing fucking it. guess. Um, uh, Amy. Um, Bayonetta does not swap out friends. Uh, Bayonetta shops with Enzo. <laughs> and then Bayonetta is back to the back to being a consumer with Enzo. Bayonetta has one consumer friend. <laughs> 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 That is incorrect, although it does feel like Enzo gets the short end of the stick here. It's like, yeah. what, just because Christmas is over, I don't get to shop with you anymore? <laughs> yeah. We'll go ahead and call this one. Uh, I say that Bayonetta, Bayonetta is leather clad. Uh, in fact, she doesn't wear leather. Her clothes are all made of her own hair. Uh, and okay, that is... I thought that's oh what you... God. Okay, okay. <laughs> I actually literally was like, I was like, her hair materializes into whatever she wants it to be. So I was like, yeah, leather, that makes sense. I mean, her hair wraps around and looks kind of like leather that's... That, damn it. <laughs> also, what a red flag. If you like see someone like, what are you into? And it's like, oh, I make clothes out of my hair. It's like, all right, well, I gotta go. <laughs> like, I got things going yeah, on today. That would be, whenever you get into hair stuff, like yeah. it can get, it can get weird real fast, you know? Like <laughs> hair to me, I feel like is a bigger, is a bigger red flag than many well, other it's things. It's also like a, it's like a really good way to make a character unlikable is for them to do anything that involves hair that doesn't involve them keeping it on their head. Like if you say yeah. the character eats, <laughs> eats hair or saves Gross. hair or keeps hair or puts the hair in the pocket, like you're like, mm-hmm, that's a sociopath. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bayonetta sociopath you heard it here first um, <laughs> well this will bring us to our first shiny question of the game uh shiny questions like shiny pokemon worth the same number of points just a little bit different and a little bit rarer uh and this is a game that we call once more without feeling i'm gonna read a line a lyric from a Christmas song with as little rhythm or melody as I can and ask you to identify what property it's from. Whoever gets the most will get the one point for this one. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we go, here's your first lyric. There's frost on every window. Oh, I can't believe my eyes. And in my bones, I feel the warmth that's coming from inside. Uh, Emma. Um, actually, that is from Nightmare Before Christmas. That is from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh... What's this? <laughs> that's the song. <laughs> Here's our next one. I know it won't be easy, but I'm gonna tighten every screw, turn every gear. I hope this time you'll see me working on this formula for years. Emma and Winston have buzzed in. Um, actually, this is from Babes in Toyland. <laughs> no, no, good guess. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Uh, I was thinking, like the toy maker. Um, actually, it's from that really creepy movie with Robin Williams and Joan Cusack. Uh, uh, toys? toys? <laughs> Toys. It's not toys. No. Uh, Amy, I'll give you a guess if you want it. Okay. Otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll call this in. Um, um, actually, it's uh, Frosty the Snowman, the animated uh, one. <laughs> it is not. This is from uh, Jingle Jangle, the, uh, the recent uh, oh, the no! Netflix, the Jingle Netflix Jangle. movie. Oh. Yes, yes. Jingle Jangle. Uh, modern classic. Uh, modern uh, classic. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to our next one. My life was simply going nowhere. Then a tiny little man rushed to my side. He should have gotten a big thank you. Instead, he got a porta potty ride. Oh, 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 your soul is an appalling dump heap overflowing with the most disgraceful assortment of deplorable rubbish imaginable mangled up and tangled up knots. Uh, Emma. 
Um, actually, this is from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This is from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. <laughs> Nothing says Christmas like telling someone their soul is an appalling dump heap <laughs> overflowing with the most disgraceful assortment of deplorable rubbish imaginable. Here is our next one. We work hard all day, but our work is play. Dolls, we try out. See if they cry out. Uh, Amy. Um, actually, this is the clay claymation Rudolph. Uh, yeah, this is the Rankin Bass Rudolph. Uh, yeah. the, yes, this is. Uh, do you know what song it is? Nice. You don't have um, to. I don't I'm just know curious. the name of the song. I bet it's before. It's like when we get before we get that Hermes is Hermes isn't like, <laughs> wants to be a dentist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is this is uh, the We Are Santa's Elves. It's part of part of that. Thing. We are yeah. Santa's yeah. Elves. Uh, oh, just, yeah. just think about how much they love working for no pay. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, every everything in fucking Santa's Honestly, workshop is fucked. What it all boils down to is that like we are exposing Santa Claus for the psychopath he is. Like he's <laughs> yeah. keeping his yep. wife hostage. He has slave labor, animal cruelty. Yeah. Also the lyric of "We play with dolls to make them cry out," and that image in my head is so locked in there from the doll, like just manu ma manufacturing <laughs> tears from nothing, tears. and they're like, yeah. "It's a good doll." <laughs> the baby's crying. <laughs> well, we have one more lyric here. Um, Emma, you've gotten two. Winston, you've got one. Amy, you've gotten one. Um, uh, so let's take a listen to this last one. When a cold wind blows, it chills you, chills you to the bone. But there's nothing in nature that freezes your heart like years of being alone. Uh, Winston is first. Um, actually, is that the Muppet Christmas Carol? That is from a Muppet Christmas Carol, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, that's right. Another very, uh, very dour lyric uh, for your Christmas season. Um, but, uh, but yes, that is from uh, the Christmas Carol. That means Winston Yay. and Emma, you both identified two of those, which means you'll share a point for this shiny question. Yay. Well, great. We'll move on to our next statement here. In the movie Rare Exports, A Christmas Tale, a Finnish reindeer farmer lays a trap for wolves, but accidentally traps a strange naked old man who turns out to be Santa Claus. Instead of giving gifts, this version of Santa attacks naughty children. Uh, Emma and then Winston. Um, actually, he wasn't trying to trap wolves, because, like, a wolf trap would not, um, be great for catching a person, but he was trying to catch a bear, and so the bear trap is large enough to catch a full-size <laughs> naked man. He does think it's wolves. I think it's like a pit oh. trap. So it's like a big oh. old like, oh. thing that well, it falls fair. into. Yeah, fair. yeah. Fair. So yes, he was. He did think the problem was wolves. Uh, Winston. Um, actually, you didn't describe a movie. You described a felony. <laughs> <laughs> Why is naked Santa chasing, attacking children? That's what? <laughs> hey, a lot of movies are felonies. Okay. Uh, <laughs> fair, fair. Um, Amy, do you have a guess for us? Yeah, yes. Um, actually, he did trap a wolf. Um, who later turned into a naked man. <laughs> a good guess, uh, like kind of leaning into a sort of like werewolfy kind yes, of vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I like that. We'll call this one. No points okay. for this one. What is uh, it? The answer, the answer we're looking for is that the strange naked old man actually turns out to be one of Santa's elves. Uh, Santa himself oh. is a is a like Krampus-like demon goat demon. man who's frozen okay. in ice. Uh, and oh my the, God. and <laughs> they think for most of the movie that this is Santa, but it is turns out to be uh, one, one of Santa's of helpers. helpers. <laughs> More elf lore, I think, is good. It's it's nice to like, put the uh, like same as like Mrs. Claus. It's nice, nice to put the focus on the elf for a little bit. My brother and law is like absolutely insane about Elf on the Shelf. They've just taken it a little bit too far. And I don't know much about Elf on the Shelf or I didn't until I went back home and accidentally was like, oh, look, Elf on the Shelf. And I touched him and I didn't know you weren't supposed to touch Elf on a Shelf. It's meant to prevent the kids from touching him and interacting and knowing that the elf isn't real. But my my brother oh. told them, if you touch, if you touch, they named him Gory, Goriel. If you touch Goriel, um, he has. He will be sent back to the North Pole. He will enter into indentured servitude until <laughs> Santa deems him ready to be back in the world, and that could be decades. And so, when I touched him, that meant like really bad stuff. And like we had to, <laughs> we had to come up with this like 
pl uh, oh, ploy no. to get a friend of mine to play Santa on the telephone and someone knew Santa's phone number and called him oh and God. and like and and he you know it's just what, Santa let him off with a warning or something <laughs> yes he said, he said we all make mistakes and it was just this like bumbling weird way to try to fix this terrible situation Amy when you said took Elf on a shelf too far I was envisioning like they made him a Hawaiian shirt and like an umbrella <laughs> drink and like lots of costumes. Like I didn't know the lore had gone too far. Two of my nephews, they checked out. They like for an hour had like locked themselves in the room and were like devastated. I don't blame them. Your, yeah. your brother told them that if they touched Elf on the, the Elf on a Shelf, that the Emancipation Proclamation is destroyed. <laughs> like that's, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to top that, so we're going to move on to the, the next statement here. In The Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack Skellington enters Christmas Town by going through a Christmas tree-shaped door set into a tree in the woods. This is just one of five doors, suggesting that other holiday-themed worlds exist behind the doors shaped like a turkey, an Easter egg, a firecracker, and a heart. Uh, Amy's buzzed in. Um, actually, uh, there are, there are like 10 or 12 different trees. You found what's wrong, that there's a wrong number of trees here. It's not quite that many. There's one tree that I left out. There's one magic door that I left out. So I'll give you the point if you can tell me what, what I left out. Oh boy, um, uh, it is, it's a president for President's Day. It's Abe Lincoln. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> what is through that door? Great sales? <laughs> just, just, just like incredible. A, bun a bunch of Lincolns and Washingtons ha like having a party. <laughs> it's not, I'll still give you the point unless someone else can tell me what, what okay. the door is. Uh, Emma's buzzed in. Um, actually, it's a shamrock for St. Patrick's Day. It is a shamrock for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, there is, <laughs> there is a St. Patty's Day door. much sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I love Where is the creativity here? <laughs> <laughs> a President's Day town is so funny. <laughs> it's just a bunch of a bunch of mattresses on sale. And like, <laughs> we'll give that point to Emma. Uh, sorry, Amy, so close. No um, <laughs> Cool, well, we'll move on to our next question here. In the Black Mirror episode, White Christmas, Matt and Joe are the sole inhabitants of a cabin who spend a snowy Christmas day telling each other their pasts. Matt used to train digital clones as personal assistants and ran an online group that recorded sexual encounters with a device called Z-Eyes. Joe talks about being blocked by his fiance, Beth, and confesses to murdering Beth's father. Winston's buzzed in. Um, actually, it's, uh, didn't murder Beth's father. Um, there was a murder, but it wasn't the father. I just don't remember who he ended up murdering. That's that's incorrect. That's incorrect. Mm. Mm. I know the episode, and I, I'm trying to. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Uh, Amy and then Emma. Um, actually, I I think the other guy did the murder. Uh, incorrect. Uh, Emma. Um, actually, Matt and Joe are not the only people in this cabin. They just think. They're the only people in the cabin. Oh, oh! You're close, and I think Winston has it now. Okay. So yeah. I'll give it yeah, to yeah, you yeah. unless Winston gets it. Um, actually, they're not actually in a cabin. They're in the AI. They put the dude in a prison, oh, and he's in the prison, and he's trying to get right. him to confess, <laughs> and then he's serving his 100 years sentence inside the thing. There it is. Ah. That's correct. They're not actually in a cabin. That's right. Uh, That's right. Emma That's set right. it up. Winston spiked it down. That point will go nice. to Winston. <laughs> I was worried this one would be too nitpicky, but it was like, ah, whatever. Yeah. It's a late, it's a late uh, episode question. We could be a little shittier in this one, but uh, yes. <laughs> Winston, that's exactly correct. Yeah, crazy how that's also how every Amazon Echo works too. You know, there's like a little person inside who just like has to do. Dude, it's that's one of dark. the creepiest. It's one of the creepiest episodes, and John Hamm's in it and everything. Like, yes. it's like a very like that whole show is dark, but that particular episode is pretty dark. I agree with you. I do think it's like there's something about it that is like deeply unsettling in a, in a way that is just sort of like kind of like sits in your stomach in a way that some of the other episodes don't. Now I can't stop thinking about the fact that there's a like a tiny person <laughs> serving out some sort of life sentence living inside of my Alexa. <laughs> right. I should probably stop saying Alexa because I learned in a recent episode that when I do that, I actually set off my viewers. <laughs> she's, she's actually echo, so. <laughs> This brings us to our next shiny question. Uh, this is a game we're calling 
technically a Christmas movie. Just a moment, I'm going to show you uh, movie posters for six different movies. Five of them take place around Christmas time. Whether or not you want to call them an actual Christmas movie, or I don't know. Um, but one of them is definitely not. Definitely does not take place around Christmas time. Uh, whoever can identify which one is not a Christmas movie it, by any definition will get the point. Let's take a look at those movies. Emma's buzzed in. Um, actually, uh, Batman 89 doesn't take place around Christmas time. It's Batman Returns that does. That's exactly correct. I have wrong <laughs> Batman up there. The rest of these all take Damn place it. around Christmas time. <laughs> that point will go to Emma. Here is our next one. In the Tales from the Crypt episode, and all through the house, a woman, Elizabeth, is besieged by a homicidal maniac dressed as Santa, who kills her husband and tries to break into her house. The maniac eventually gets in when Elizabeth's daughter lets him in the front door, thinking he's Santa Claus. Uh, Winston. I'm actually not a daughter, it's their son. No, it is, it is a daughter. Let's go Amy yeah. and then Emma. Okay. Um, actually, no <laughs> self-respecting child would think that Santa enters through a front door. <laughs> so that the daughter probably was like, there, there's no way you're real Santa. Santa would come down a chimney. And so I, I guess the mom let, or somebody else let him in because a, a kid would know that Santa comes through the chimney. That's a good guess. There is a, a point in the episode where he's like climbing on the roof and there is a sort of chimney thing here, but ultimately he does just sort of come, is, she lets him in. Um, Emma. Yeah, um, actually, my answer was very similar to Amy's, which was that he does not enter through the door because in order to maintain the illusion of being Santa, he enters the house <laughs> via the chimney somehow. Uh, no, no, still incorrect. Um, we'll go ahead and call this one. The answer we were looking for was that actually the mother murders her husband. There is also a homicidal maniac, and she has the plan to try to pin the murder on this maniac. Oh. Uh, and it is in the act of trying to, of this subterfuge of being like, I'll drag his body outside and pretend he was killed by this guy, that the actual maniac shows up and she has to contend with him. Uh, that is the answer we're looking for. Yeah. So she deserved it. Layered. Layered. <laughs> yeah. We're going to keep this moving. Here is our next statement. In the episode A Midwinter's Tale of the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, the Spellman family Christmas is disrupted when they discover their house is haunted by Grilla and the Yule Lads. Though initially antagonistic toward the family, Grilla ultimately helps them fight the demon Bartle, who has been dressing as a mall Santa and trapping the souls of children in wax. Uh, Winston. Um, actually, I'm realizing why I did not watch The Chilling Tales of Sabrina. That sounds a little too intense for me. <laughs> they're not trapped in wax. They're trapped in a nutcracker doll. Uh, oh. No, no, incorrect. Uh, uh, Emma. Okay, um, actually, it's not so much that they realized that their house was haunted at that point. Like, they, uh -huh. they're witches. They already knew their house was haunted. It's just that, like... The spirits only come out at Christmas time because they just have so much holiday spirit and just really want to be involved. That's not what we're looking for. It's kind of playing with the idea of the the, the definition of realize. Uh, I'm going to see okay. if Amy has a as a as a closer guess. Yeah. Um. Actually, uh, Gorilla was never antagonistic. They're they're just there for the the goodness of the holidays. They're they if they want to fight demons on the holidays, they're down. If they just want to have some cookies, they're also down. <laughs> That's a good guess, but that's that's not what we're looking for. Um, okay. uh, we'll call this one. Uh, Emma actually had a guess for the actual answer I was looking for in a previous question, which is that they're witches. They're not celebrating Christmas. Uh, they're celebrating. Oh God, oh, damn wow. it! Yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Awesome. They're witches. Why would they celebrate Christmas? They worship Christmas. the devil. Oh. They're they're celebrating solstice. Uh, although they do still have a very nice Yule log as part of yes. their solstice celebrations. Yes. Incredible. We have Incredible. two questions left. This is our last shiny question of the game. This is a game called Needs More Pixels. Just a moment, we're gonna show you a, an iconic image from some Christmas movie or TV show that we have pixelated all to hell. You only get one guess for this one. If you guess wrong, you're out forever. If you decide you all wanna pass, we're gonna show you a slightly clearer version. But remember, that'll make it easier on your competitors too. So let's take a look at this image. Can you identify what this is from? Pass. Pat, Winston pass. is passing. Emma's okay, passing. Pass. Amy, you want to get, you're passing. All right, let's go one level clearer. Pass. 
Uh, Amy. Um, actually, is that the Grinch who stole Christmas? That is the Grinch. That's the Grinch. Just the Grinch. Let's go ahead and bring it, make it nice and clear. <laughs> it's the classic Grinchy smile. Yes. <laughs> well, we have one last uh, question here. What's our point total as we go into the end here? Five for Emma. One for Amy, oh, two for Lord. Winston. Uh, Emma's <laughs> run away with this one. Honestly, uh, this is my greatest performance yet, I think. <laughs> this is, as always, uh, our real life skills question. So arguably our most important one because it's the one that matters in real life. Tis the season for colds. If you're heading to the pharmacy, you'll have a choice to make between generic and brand name drugs. While generic drugs are cheaper, brand name drugs often act faster or have longer lasting effects. Uh, Emma. Um, actually, generic drugs work exactly the same as brand name drugs. That's correct. They're, uh, they're exactly the same <laughs> thing. There's zero difference between brand name and generic drugs. They're the same chemical compound. One is just more expensive. There's literally no reason to yes. buy a brand That's name a, drug. Yeah. My mama always gave me pink bismuth. My stomach hurt just as bad. That's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> well, that point will go to Emma. Final score, six points for Emma two points for Winston, one point for Amy. That makes Emma our winner this holly jolly episode. This is truly a great honor. Um, again, I would I would like to thank Rowan Atkinson um, who <laughs> made this possible for me. Uh, and also Netflix for having the Black Adder Christmas special on it for a really long time. I may not have strong roots in Christianity, but I have strong roots in Great Britain where many of our <laughs> Christmas traditions originated. Thank you all for joining us and thank you for giving me the greatest gift of all, which is the gift of giving, giving you all points. Um, and thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections right here on Um Actually.